Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Daniel Schiffer. I make videos right here on YouTube all about filmmaking and content creation. So if you're into that kind of thing, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. I guarantee you will not regret it. Today we're gonna to be answering one of the questions that I get all of the time, and that is how do I focus when using a gimbal? So if you didn't already know, I frequently use two different gimbal setups depending on the project, and my method for focusing also varies depending on the content. So let's start with my run and gun setup, which is the Sony a6500 on the Zion Crane Plus. This small and lightweight setup is what I use when I know that I'm only going to be using the gimbal pretty much the entirety of the shoot. Usually if I'm using my a6500 on the Crane Plus, I'm going to be using the Sigma 16mm f1.4 and I likely will not have any other gear with me at all whatsoever. So let's talk about focusing with this setup. The Sony a6500 has really fast and reliable autofocus which is great for those types of projects that I was talking about before where I'll be on the go. For example, a hockey video where I'm skating around the ice and usually in a scenario like this I like to have one hand free just in case I have to break a fall or stop one of the kids from crashing into me. So using autofocus is nice in this type of scenario because the camera just does all the work. All I have to worry about is framing and keeping my balance. I've also used autofocus with this setup for a lot of my restaurant videos but keep in mind that if you are going to use autofocus for this type of work I recommend doing this with the intention of slowing the footage down. Oftentimes when shooting this type of work, your focus will hunt quite a bit if you are using autofocus, which is why I suggest shooting in that higher frame rate. So by being able to slow down your footage, that means that even if you capture one second of clean in focus footage, you can slow that down and stretch it out over the span of like five seconds, which is kind of cheating. And I do this all the time. There's nothing wrong with it. And it works out pretty well, makes your footage look dramatic. But just keep in mind that you don't want to keep any of that focus hunting in your video because that will come off as looking kind of amateur. But let's say your camera doesn't shoot in a higher frame rate or your autofocus is hunting all over the place or maybe you just don't want to use autofocus in general. Well, this is the scenario when you would use manual focus. When shooting in manual focus on a gimbal, you will probably want to close your aperture just a bit. By doing this, you can keep a lot more of what's in your frame in focus and that way you don't have to worry as much about remaining the same distance from your subject because it won't look as noticeably less sharp if you do stray away from that distance just a bit. What's cool about using manual focus is that there's a whole bunch of ways you can get creative that aren't available when shooting autofocus. For example, I love to do these reveal shots. I do them all the time in my videos and it just creates a really nice separation from the foreground and what your subject is or the background. It looks really cool. I highly recommend trying this out, but shooting in manual focus is definitely the key for this type of shot. If you are shooting on the Sony a6300 or or A6500, a cool tip for manual focus which makes the whole process much faster is to use this little AF-MF button right here on the back of the camera. Just make sure your camera is already set to manual focus and then make sure that the switch is set to AF-MF and not AEL. Simply just point your camera at the subject click and hold the button until it locks focus, let go and you're good to go. This is great if you're using a gimbal because you don't have to have your hand on the lens of your camera, turning the focus ring, putting unnecessary stress on the motors, and it's just a nice reliable way to lock onto your subject efficiently. Okay, so that covers how I focus with the run and gun setup of the Sony a6500 on the Zion Crane Plus but how do I focus with my other setup? So when I have shoots that have more of a pre-thought out direction, whether that be from a storyboard or a vision going into a video, I like to use my Sony a7 III with the Crane 2. Generally speaking, this is my setup for the more professional style shoots that I do, where I'm bringing all the lighting and the audio and just have all my gear with me and I wanna make sure I'm getting the best, most crispy results and I have the most control over everything. And with this setup, 
setup of the Sony a7 III and a Zion Crane II, I use the new servo follow focus from Zion because this allows me to get very clean and controlled focus pulls directly from the follow focus wheel on the Crane II handle. The results are extremely smooth and it takes gimbal operating to a whole new level. And the best part is that now I can have full control over the framing, the camera movement, as well as the focus while still getting creative with my shots. And another bonus about using the servo follow focus on the Crane 2 is that now I can use manual lenses on the gimbal and not worry about putting unnecessary stress on the gimbal motors when focusing the ring on the camera lens. So as I'm just finishing up editing this video, I just got word that Zion will now be including the servo follow focus with every version of the Crane 2 being sold, which is great news because now you do not have to pay extra to get the servo follow focus if you are a Sony user or just basically any non-Canon user. Yeah, good to know. So hopefully that answers all of your questions on how I focus when using a gimbal. If you guys enjoyed this video or found it helpful, then make sure you hit it with a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.